So Jordan Poole's future with the Warriors is murky, murkier, but not unsalvageable. Interesting. It's murky, but it's not sa- unsalvageable. So I'm very eager to see where Slater is going here because it sounds like Poole could be on the outs here. And if Poole is on the outs, if, if Poole is on the outs, then, man, you re-sign Draymond Green. Because it... Now, there's a there's a power structure here at play that I want to get into in a second, but go ahead yeah, and shout you know, it out. I, I do want to get into that because I find this very fascinating. But very briefly, you know I'm coaching the uh, SFYBL team mm-hmm. right now. We got a, It's like a collection. It's a league in the city, and shout it's a collection Charlie, of— Shout out Charlie. Shout out Prince. Shout out yep. little uh, Tiny. Tiny, oh, my JT. guy Tiny. Tiny JT. Yeah. And all JT those a, kids, man. Sleepy. Weekend. What about Sleepy? How do you do? Uh, Daz did not make the tournament. We were shorthanded, so we had uh, some of our alternates come up, which was awesome. But like, just to give you an idea, B, uh, you know, baseball up north is always going to be superior to the, what mm-hmm. we have down here. Like, it's just they're a little more organized. They they play all year round because the weather and the fields and th- there's a lot that goes into it. And and quite honestly, they have really really good coaching and great infrastructure in place to put together great programs. Um, so our SFYBL team. In our league this year, we probably played the division as a whole, like 80 games, B. We were playing right. teams that played 60 games. These teams, yeah, that's insane. 60 games, but they're really, really good. So our team goes up there on Saturday. Because of run differential, we got dropped to what would be the silver bracket, the loser's bracket. We ended up winning on Sunday. We get into the championship game. We play Woodland. We actually played a team from Richmond, and I want to give a shout-out to Coach T. He's doing great work with these young men. He's, he uh, practices out at Pinole. Coach T plays the game the way I appreciate the mm. game being played, and he's out there right now. Hopefully, he's listening Great dude, great program. It was great to see like an, a real urban team out there balling. Like this yeah, dude is out there cool. putting in the work for baseball in the city of Richmond, and I thought it was awesome to see. Got to watch uh, Harbaugh, dude. Got to th- watch Mar- go watch the movie Harbaugh with Keanu Reeves. I-, I said to one of the dads, I go, that coach right there, Coach T, that's the kind of guy I like. Like you, you, your kid is lucky right. to be playing for them. So Seriously. we ended up playing them uh, in the in the semifinals. We go into the championship. We played Woodland, and this team from Woodland was awesome. The Lobos. We ended up losing nine. One, but our guys got second place, and for a city team cool. that just got put together, I was right. so proud of them. I mean, cool. We played so well. Vines was hitting bombs. Charlie making plays at shortstop, your favorite. JT behind the dish looked awesome. Uh, little West coming in and slinging it. West. Uh, our team was balling, and I got to give a West. shout out to our guy. I call him Logan Posey. Logan Johnson was an absolute monster Saturday and Sunday. We we, we showed out, and I was really yeah. proud of our little league team out there. And so we got a big tournament this weekend in you Pleasant know, Hill. You know, speaking of baseball. And I'm thinking about Quinn Matthew and 156 pitches. Mm. Let's try to get him on the show. I'm gonna yeah, let's get him. holler at Laura Wakefield. Laura Wakefield let's down there at Stanford. Him. Shout out to Laura Wakefield. She's probably up early right now at Stanford baseball. Try, maybe I'll go see her. I may go to this game today. Laura, if you're out there listening, I know you are. Nice. I'm going to send her a text. Let's get this guy on the air. How does his arm feel? Yeah. Dude, dude, like, whose decision was it? Because this guy had a chance. He got drafted by the Tampa Bay Rays. Was listening to the broadcast. It's like, damn it. He's an old school lefty. You know, it's got the change. It's mm-hmm. got the slider. We locked a couple mm-hmm. people up. Fastball was hitting about 93, 94. Uh, but maybe we should get them on. Uh, the art of pitching is keeping people off balance. Right. So and I, I look like that's what he was doing that's yesterday. That's what he was doing. So I, I, I saw a couple graphs here I want to read to you as we opened up. I didn't even think we were going to go in this direction, but I got something very intriguing that I want to read from this Slater piece on okay. The Athletic right now as you are listening to 95.7 The Game, yeah. KGMG FM, and AC1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app. So this is very intriguing, Shasky. I want your thoughts on this. Give it to me. Quickly on the vacant general manager spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kirk Lakeup and Mike Dunleavy Jr. are currently running the show, and even as a draft and free agency near, there doesn't appear to be any urgency to officially announce a front office restructuring. Huh. Joe Lakeup, the ultimate decider, wasn't in town this past week. Indications remain that Dunleavy and Lakeup will step into elevated leadership roles, so their interim structure is the most likely permanent structure. That's it, relevant. That's interesting. Kirk and Dunleavy were influential voices within the established front office that gave Poole that hefty contract extension last October. Dunleavy was a scout before the 2019 draft. He saw Poole at Michigan and was a prominent uh, was a proponent of taking him 28th, adding some playmaking skill and creation to a roster that needs it around Stephen Curry. They maintained belief in Poole through his early career struggles, 
rewarded his breakout and have shown no indication that a turbulent couple of months will change their overall opinion on the 23-year-old's future. One point that's been made, you can't argue that he's unable or unready to be a high-level contributor to winning NBA basketball because he's already done it on the biggest stage for a title team with this exact core. So first of all, let's start with the GM. Let's start with the GM stuff. Kurt Lake of Mike Dunleavy Jr. are currently running the show. Does that concern any Warrior fan? Do you feel good about that? That they're going to maybe be elevated to this position here? Kurt Lake of Mike Dunleavy Jr. and Dunleavy Jr. being influential in drafting Jordan Poole and getting him that contract extension. How are we feeling, folks? Well, let me ask you this one. Like, Have you ever been a part of a corporate restructure? where they change titles and names yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Now, I don't know if this is the case. I'm, I, I'm, this is me giving you my experience in corporate settings. Mm -hmm. I have been in situations where someone leaves a position, and maybe they were planning on corporate restructuring anyway, but they change names and titles, and they kind of change the hierarchy of the organization. And in some cases, they do it, to kind of save money and to also keep certain individuals out of scrutiny, right? And right. maybe you try to make it more collaborative or more mm -hmm. committee-based as opposed to individualist-based. Mm -hmm. And you do that for a variety of reasons. Now, I'm not saying that's because he's trying to be cheap. That's People are misinterpreting what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying that, like, we look at this and like, you're the GM and you make all the decisions and... Haven't we kind of seen this in sports where it's trending? And I'm not caping up for anyone. Collaborative uh, decisions? Well, like like the Niners. Are we certain? I think the GM currently is John Lynch. That's yes. his title. Or he could be the president of football operations. The exact title. John Lynch. Do you get where I'm going? I get where you're going. Right, like, like right now, Farhan is kind of the... President of baseball ops, and but the, he runs everything. And the GM's, and the GM's the guy. Yeah, yep, exactly. Right? But we all think that the buck stops with Farhan. Right, he makes right? the final decision. So does it really matter if they name a particular GM, general manager? Right. No, it's who's going to be making the decisions. And it sounds like the Lakers will get a little more power in the decision-making without Bob Myers. How does that make? How does it make Warrior fans feel, you That's think? That's what I'm saying. So I think that I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think a lot of Warrior fans are going to pivot. And this isn't me. I think there's a lot of Warrior fans are going to pivot and say nepotism. He's absolutely. not ready. You know, what it's are we doing? Here. Why are we giving him more power? And my kickback to that would be like any person that they hired from the outside and brought in whose name we went, we didn't know that wasn't a former mm -hmm. player. Wouldn't we be skeptical? Absolutely. We're probably more skeptical because we see, oh, Lake up, Lake up son. Instantly, we feel some kind of way. So, fair or not? 650, Comcast Business Text Line. More concerned about Kurt Lake of than Mike Dunleavy Jr. I believe in Mike Dunleavy Jr. I do. I'm a believer in Mike Dunleavy Jr. to get the job done. I'll say this on the front end I'm a little concerned if the Lakers do have a little more power, but they've had a lot of time to. To gain experience of running an organization, they've done well on the business side. We all know that. You got the stadium up. You own the property. You're selling jerseys left and right. You're selling out concerts. All that good stuff. But Kurt now having a bigger voice. And he did get tutelage from Bob Myers. Is there any concern if Kurt Lakeup and Mike Dunleavy Jr. are the future decision makers of the Go to State Warriors? Again, and Anthony Slater's piece that he just released this morning gets to it on The Athletic. Maybe we get Anthony Slater on before the week is over. Does it um, Does it make it more easy or less easy if it's a committee that's making decisions on? I don't know on movement. Who's the final decision maker? Who's the guy who says we have to take this guy? <laughs> it feel that's like, it. Feels like Joe. It feels like Joe Lacob. I, so I mean, how, am, I, am I wrong? How does that make people feel? How does that make people feel? Do I I get the sense, and this is my gut, my speculation. You still got a lot of other guys involved. Well, yeah. Larry uh, Larry Harris is still involved. How much and that's a good does Kerr have? Yeah, that's a good point. Does Kerr have that juice? Can 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 Kerr have that juice with only one year left on his deal? That's a good question as well. I, I keep going back to you know the very rarely does a coach make a great GM because a coach wants to win tonight. A GM wants to win for the next multiple seasons, right. right? Like they're always trying to set their roster up for the now and the future. And so I think at times coaches and GMs, you know, just naturally are going to be diametrically so, opposed at times when right. it comes to roster construction. And then I don't know if I want Steve Kerr having that much mm. influence on the roster. Yes, I need him to be kind of buying in and, and get it. But like if you were listening to the vets and the coach, you right. probably don't uncover a GP2.
So here, you know what I mean? Yeah, Last no year, no doubt, you don't. You would have stuck with an Avery Bradley. Stuck, yeah, and that would have right? been a and disaster. So there are times healthy. where it gives, and there's times where it takes. Again, I want to read this graph again quickly on a vacant GM spot. Kirk Lake of a Mike Dunleavy Jr. are currently running the show, and even as a draft and free agency near, there doesn't appear any urgency to be any urgency to officially announce a front office restructuring. Joe Lacob, the ultimate decider. That's what Slater writes. So Joe Lacob, the ultimate decider. How does that make people feel? Yeah, exactly. 888-957-9570. And I already knew this was coming because it's hard not to think this way. 510, Comcast Business Text Line. This situation gives me a bit of Jerry Jones vibes. That's Teeks from Hayward. Do people feel like that? Joe Lacob, the ultimate decider. So he's got some big-time decisions to make. Well, if I owned the organization, I'm going to tell everyone this. If I owned a team, hell yeah, I'd want influence. It's my team. And I know people feel like that teams are, uh, you know, owned by the community, essentially, and you're just a steward of it. And uh, No, that's not the case. When you right. spend the amount of money that these people spend, and yeah. you're invested emotionally and fiscally as deep as they are, like, I'm sorry, you're going to have influence on your product. Right. So this thing no. that like the owner is not going to be involved is well, like, absurd to well, me. Well, Lakeup, again, I wish we could pull up the sound here. When Lakeup joined us in studio a couple, right during the, yes. the championship season from a couple seasons ago, he told us that he's in on every group decision. He's involved in the decision-making process. He told us that straight up. Now, was that a problem for Bob Myers? And did that maybe help Bob Myers make his decision to maybe step away because he wants total control and not – Maybe input from the ownership well, yeah, group. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I can't sit here and say that I didn't think he had influence on Bob Myers prior to yeah. Bob Myers leaving. Now this makes it clear yes. that it makes it a little more clear that boy Bob maybe stepped away because maybe there was too much for the owner. Loveman had a question here before we hit the break. Loveman, what you got? Yeah, I just kind of curious. Like when it feels like when did all this kind of like hesitation towards like trusting Joe Lake really pop up? Because ever since he's gotten here. You know, he's turned, you know, the Warriors were just Great completely point. downtrodden yeah. when he got here. He's completely flipped them around. That was all under his watch. And now that Bob Myers is leaving, it's all of a sudden like, oh, can Joe Lacob, can he still run the Warriors? Can he still run the Warriors? He's been doing a pretty dang good job <laughs> of running the Warriors I, the last 10 plus years. Why all of a sudden I now are we, are we so hesitant about this? Mm, that's an interesting question there. 888-957-9570. Do you trust Joe Lacob to make the ultimate decision for the go to say Warriors? And we've got a bunch of decisions to make this all season. Love and hell of a question there. Hell of a question. We'll roll with that on the other side.